Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Phil Elvrum Discog Breakdown. I am Alex, and with me is Jake. Hello everybody. Welcome. Um, Here we go. Welcome. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do probably a kind of short episode. We're going to be talking about the, um, the little uh, Mount Erie era microphones documentary, uh, also about little wings called wise old little boy and we're gonna be talking about the uh mount erie pseudo concert film fog movies yes this is like a uh a, like a like a sub interlude episode like an interlude interlude um, yes as as we we're still trying to be on a weekly schedule um and yet we're also not able to record the clear moon cast until next week so we figured uh you know just a just a holdover yeah just sort of Uh, a little informal relaxed episode not that uh other episodes of ours aren't already like that but (laughs) um yeah Uh, can i can i tell you just like a this is not related to anything but just since it's a already an informal episode do you want to do you want to hear a fun fact sure it's, uh, this is my favorite fun fact. It has nothing to do with Phil Overham. Um, okay. Also, I don't know how true this is. Um, I learned this in my freshman year of college astronomy class. Our professor told us this. So if it's not true, then I'm sorry. But also, then I want my money back. Um, anyways. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sold. So yeah, this is an astronomy fun fact. Um, I'll try. I might fuck up explaining this, but so... The universe emits cosmic background radiation left over from the Big Bang. Yeah. Um, and it's like detectable as microwaves on the electromagnetic spectrum. Yep. And it's microwaves now because it had a lot of time to cool down or whatever. But um, right after the Big Bang, the radiation was gamma waves. And they can deduce that because, uh, you know, like depending on where they point their like detectors or whatever, they can kind of track this change happening over time. Like, the further out they look, the faster the waves are, because, like, the further you look out into space, you're also looking into the fast. Anyways, um, okay, that means that at some point between gamma waves and microwaves, like, billions of years ago, the cosmic background radiation left off by the universe would have fallen within the human visible spectrum, meaning that, like, if humans were around during that time, the color of the night sky would have slowly shifted through the visible color spectrum from red wow. to violet over the course of like millions of years or something. That's really cool. Yeah. It's my it's it's my favorite little fun fact. I hope it's true. I kind of don't I kind of haven't looked it up on purpose ever cuz I just hope it's true and if it's not true then that'll make me sad. Yeah, I I get that. So I'm just kind I, of I living in ignorance. That's and totally fair. Assuming <laughs> that that's real. <laughs> Better to live in ignorance. That's right. That's right. Um um so anyway uh, yeah <laughs> yeah um a little bit of official business before we get started um as as you may have noticed if you follow us on twitter <laughs> you may have uh, seen one of the 25 tweets that yes. got retweeted about it <laughs> um we the indie heads podcast has started a patreon yes um and, and uh, we we would love it if you could support us. I don't know how to pitch this. Um, I mean, I did not. I did not plan a pitch in in advance. The lowest tier is just one dollar. So yeah, um, you get you get access to our Discord. You can come talk to us about indie music, butt rock. Um, uh they've been talking about weird family guy merch for the past <laughs> hour <Yep>. um <laughs> if any of this stuff uh seems interesting to you then um yeah i would i would definitely suggest looking into that we have uh um, oh, we also talked about vegetables earlier today for like yeah. a while that was a great chat yeah if you want to um, know my takes on brussels sprouts i mean i won't reveal them here but they're pretty yeah that 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 is uh patron only information <laughs> <laughs> anyway um yeah um also other tiers are like 
Uh, for five bucks, you can get episodes. Well, I guess you get episodes early no matter what. Sorry. Uh, but for five bucks, there are going to be some bonus episodes, and we're going to have some some fun, fun, dumb shit that we probably wouldn't do as podcasts normally. There's some other very creative episode ideas as well that I'm excited to um, to give a shot. Some cool kind of episode formats that we haven't really uh, done yet, but I won't spoil anything. Yeah, we're we're gonna be we're gonna be testing some stuff out, uh, doing doing some dumb ideas that we wouldn't do yeah. otherwise. Um, it's gonna be fun. Uh, so so you if if you if you subscribe to us, we, you might get like a a format that. <laughs> That won't make prime time. <laughs> um, you can see the yes. the inner workings of the podcast. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, feel free to come support us. And if there's any venture capitalists out there listening yes, to this, there, we have we have um, a venture capitalist here. Only Mr. ten thousand dollars a month. Um, Mr. Bezos, which, if you're out there, yes, yes, Mr. Musk and Mr. Bezos, we know you're listening. They must um, be listening to this. Please, please pitch in. Uh, this this is not free. Uh. <laughs> um, Mark Zuckerberg, you're not allowed to pitch in. Actually, all other venture capitalists, though, fine. Uh, you take your ten thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, um, begrudgingly. Yeah. Um, but we'll do what we must. Anyway, uh, shouts out to um, our our uh, real one tier patrons, uh, Derek and Maze Farms. Thank you for your support. Uh, anyway, here's the episode. Uh, sorry about that long, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so should we uh, should we do? chronologically i feel like i have a lot more to talk about wise old little boy but i feel like chronologically is how we usually do this let's just start with fog movies because like you said i feel like there's not really like a whole lot to say about it yeah Um, and then we can probably spend more time getting into wise old little boy and any tangents that that may produce okay yeah yeah sorry no you're fine (laughs) i'm a little spaced out i this was this was kind of a tough time for me to to try to absorb this piece of media because i mean i i did it today and uh today is also when we launched our patreon discord and and there have been a lot of interesting conversations (laughs) yeah (laughs) um and i've just uh i've just been a little bit like excited and scattered and this is very much a slow, meditative thing, uh, which I did not super have the patience for right now, though I do think it is cool. Yeah, that's um, fair. Um, I mean, just to give a little background, I, f- I found a little paragraph description of what this is um, yeah. on, on his website, so I'll just read that. Um, you know, this is a description written by Phil, presumably. It says... This DVD is for home simulation of a Mount Erie concert. The footage is the boring slash beautiful fog movies that have been projected at recent Mount Erie shows, kind of a movie version of the photo book Mount Erie Part 6 and 7. The music is a live bootleg of Mount Erie performing acoustic live at What the Heck Fest 2007 in the City Hall basement of Anacortes, Washington, recorded by professional bootleggers Jackson Barnes and Billy Scanlon. There are 11 songs and a thunder introduction. If you Wait, couldn't make it to any of the... Re- oh, yes? Did you say Billy Scantlin? Whoa, it's not <laughs> spelt the same, but like okay, somewhere okay. down that genealogical line, <laughs> Mr. Distant, Mud is... <laughs> distant cousin of Wet's Mud. Yes. I'm sorry, um... F- finish the... <laughs> <laughs> so... So there are 11 songs and a thunder introduction. If you couldn't make it to any of the recent Mount Erie shows, all you have to do is put this DVD on and space out. Ta-da. And that's, that's all it says. So, yeah. Um, that's a, that's a, good, a good uh description. For yeah, it. I mean, that's, that's like basically what it pitch. is. It's, it's a live yeah. Mount Erie concert over footage of, like, various foggy landscapes, I guess. I guess Gorgeous shots. Um, yeah, really. Not really. not all foggy. There were a couple like, there's like a a 
forge situation going yes. on during the yes. gleam part two. During the gleam There's part a brief two, shot of um of just a like a quiet street corner at night. Yep. Um. Um. I like but, that gleam part two shot. Like it's like some sort of refinery or factory. I don't know what exactly, but they're incinerating something, and there's like a guy in a forklift. Yeah. Um, and it kind of stands the, the out. More, the more you watch it, the more you just get the impression that that, that is where this song resides. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is a pretty, I mean, the Gleam Part 2 is a, a, a pretty intense song. That was the song, right? Yeah. Or was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, is sort of like, it, we've talked about this before, it's sort of like representative of, of uh, death in a way, I guess, um, or, or really an abstract concept of death, but, uh, sort of like the, the kind of harsh, intense light of the forge and just the sort of like a refinery or whatever it is. And the, the sort of like quiet, I don't know. It was just kind of ominous. It just felt very fitting. It's, it's very striking. And it yeah. stand and it does stand out because yeah, like a lot of the not all of the shots, but a lot of the shots are just these kind of serene landscapes. A lot of shots of what I'm presuming is Mount Erie itself, either from on Mount Erie or from yeah. below, like looking at it. Um, and yeah, all this kind of nice, uh, relaxing footage, and then bam, like, ex- like fire and uh, something being like smelted. Um, it was an image. Um, I don't know. Anyways, I will say that I personally am just like a fan of dark, dreary, cloudy, rainy weather. Um, like, so I guess I would enjoy Washington State or something. But yeah, it's just like very cozy and nice. And these shots kind of evoke that feeling of like sitting at home when it's like raining outside. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like, I personally, I'm, this is probably not a normal thing, but if it's like sunny too many days in a row i get kind of like upset about it i'm like man this is annoying i wish it was raining right now i don't know why <laughs> it's you just like very like washington <laughs> yeah it's just, it's just like very comforting to me i guess like i like rain and thunderstorms and just that whole vibe is good to me and me uh, too i it definitely starts to like drag on me when it's been too long since there was yeah. like precipitation um and there there is like I don't know. I don't know if you get a sort of like sense of relief and calm when it rains, but yeah. I do. And there is Definitely. there's actual science behind it. Um, though I don't know the, I don't necessarily know the the details super well. But basically, it like I think it puts negative ions in the air or something yeah there is something like that counteracts like positive ions from pollen or something and it makes the air feel cleaner and more fresh yeah. and whatever you can it's, you can like smell like, more it's kind of like an antidepressant um yeah i like that and i think that this sort of video exists in that realm of things i guess you could say <laughs> um so i really enjoyed it when i was just i just kind of had it on idly i wasn't like super intently paying attention to every shot you know because a lot of it is just like a two minute shot of like the like a mountain or something yeah um, but it's good like the, the concert is good too he does uh he runs through an, ac- an acoustic rendition of every song from mount erie part six and seven um sort of counterintuitive because that album is so like uh heavy but yeah i thought it worked really well they were really pretty no, it was good. Um, yeah, I was definitely going into it. I was like, how does uh, Unknown World work in this scenario? But it did. Yeah, it, in fact, I, th- I sort of thought it was... Um, um, like, the songs were still very effective to me on the acoustic guitar because I could sort of hear the chord structures more and like the, I feel like the melodies popped a little more. Uh, just because there wasn't there weren't so many layers um not that the like i love the original version as well but um i don't know it was just sort of like a it was refreshing to hear these songs in in this in this mode i was sort of surprised how much i was into it honestly yeah i mean speaks to the quality of the songwriting right yeah 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 
yeah these are these are good songs um i was pretty hyped at the at the dawn songs i yeah. just i love them and uh they're good <laughs> yeah, he played uh he played who there was it wasn't the hunting you know kind of classics um yeah grave robbers also a you know great song um he plays a song called certainty which i don't think has been on any of the albums we've talked about so far it is not we have not heard that song there's a song called uncertainty on song islands 2 that also he plays during these fog movies but i never heard um normal certainty it's not like a mind blowing song or anything but i was like oh i have not i don't recognize Notable. this yeah 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 um one thing i noted and i so a lot of these shots i'm just assuming are shots of mount erie i don't know for sure um but there's this one shot of what i'm assu- the one that i'm most sure is mount erie which is just a sort of like dramatic cliff face um, where like trees kind of like run up and then it just like cuts off and that was it just looks very uh, ominous and like I can understand why um, you know if you lived under the shadow of that for your whole life that it would be like a striking <laughs> image to you. <laughs> I am looking it up. I actually I don't know. See, there aren't a lot of pictures of just like the mountain like there are pictures from the mountain or like in the foothills or on a trail or whatever um yeah i don't know that i'm actually i feel unsure that that is mount erie because i it's not actually like a super big mountain yeah that's a good Um, point now that i am also just google imaged it and maybe that maybe that shot was not mount erie it does have like a rocky cliff face on one side, but it doesn't. It's I don't not know, as dramatic like, as the one in the fog movies. Yeah, but at the same time, it could just be like the angle he shot it at, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. I don't know. Um, and there isn't like a. There isn't a good picture here that would, uh, tell us. I guess. The geography of this area reminds me a lot of where I lived for a long time in Minnesota, in a place called Winona. Not to, like, dox myself, but um, (laughs) it was just, like, a lot of bluffs that, like, weren't necessarily tall enough to be considered mountains, but they're still, like, pretty tall. Um, I guess foothills would be, like, another another word for it. And, like, a lot of just kind of, like, little splotches of water everywhere. It looks very similar. Um, So, I don't know. It's pretty neat. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm good on this. I think. Yeah, me too. Me uh, too. Fog movies is is really pleasant. Yeah, check it out. And uh, yeah, if if what we've what we've been talking about sounds like your thing, it's it's good. You should try yes. it. Yes. Yes. Um, definitely feels like an enjoyable thing to put on. Like. During. I don't know. I don't want to call it relaxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just like, I don't know, you're just hanging out and you sort of put it on and you aren't like 100% watching, but like Maybe if you're there. like doing homework or something. Um, yeah. And you don't want something that's like super distracting, but is like some nice images to look up at periodically while you're yeah. just listening to some nice Mount Erie tunes. Um, it feels like it presents like an environment and a yeah a, a hashtag vibe like hashtag like vibe. lo-fi beats to <laughs> chill study relax too yes um yep i guess yeah, it's, I don't think is you it, can put it chill lo-fi hip-hop beats i don't know i, I, I think don't there's several like similar variations of that yeah on youtube yeah okay um so the the next movie we're talking about is wise old little boy which is a uh, uh documentary thing it's it's short it's only an hour long um uh but it's a documentary of a sort of miniature tour that phil elverham and kyle field of little wings went on in the in like eastern washington and northern idaho Um, yes 
and uh, I I really liked it a lot, actually. Um, it's very pleasant and interesting. There's a lot of interesting kind of little. Yeah, it it feels just like a a really like like gently rendered uh portrait of of two people moving from place to place performing their art for strangers um yeah yeah it's not it's not like a um like a meat and potatoes documentary where there's like uh, yeah. confessional interviews and stuff it's kind of just like footage of them playing these shows kind of mixed with footage of them talking maybe like answering certain questions kind of back and forth yeah. over the course of what i imagine is like a couple weeks of them doing this little tour um, and there, there's none of that usual like like larger than life pretense that often like uh anchors so many do- like tour documentaries of musicians yeah. like yeah uh these are just dudes um we knew that, but that is how the movie wants us to feel also. Yes. Um, uh, and it's nice. It's, it it's is nice. refreshing. Um, They're doing material from mostly, like, I think this tour is technically for Mount Erie, the album. Um, yes. As those are, they're performing songs from that album as well as a couple of songs from the Globe. Yeah, Club primarily so it's kind of in that. that area. There were a couple, like, like sort of, b-sides from from a kind of long transitional period that happened you know like between the microphones and mount erie um yeah yeah i mean technically not really but like we we'd see a lot of these songs in collections i guess um or, or see these songs in a lot of collections is more what i meant yeah there wasn't anything that was like super uh uh, like brand new or anything um there were some little wing songs that i thought were very pleasant that i never heard before specifically i wrote it down what is it called uh, i have to control f this oh it's called look at what the light did now um oh yeah it, i like that too is, I, uh, I have never listened to little wings but i'm definitely interested to uh check yeah it out. um i looked up i i because they played that song um and there was some footage of them like laying in a field or something and i was like i really yeah. like the song so i googled it and the first video is actually kyle field playing it with uh feist who is an oh, artist that wow. i'm also familiar with and i didn't know they were connected in any way so i was uh, yeah that's sort cool. of surprised that they did that song together so i haven't even listened to it but i bookmarked it so i'm gonna listen to it after this probably um there's just a lot of fun little tidbits yeah yeah for sure um it's 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 such a it's like a i don't know i already provided a sweeping description of the movie but it's such a warm like document of this period of time i guess like i don't know i it just feels very anchored in like 2004 you know (laughs) yeah that's true um it's also like i don't know um i guess this is kind of a tangent but um (laughs) i found it really comforting to watch like it was so nice to to watch this and and feel immersed in a time when we could just go out and do things and and see people yeah. and make art with our friends. Uh, the 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 pandemic fucking sucks. Um, not a big fan. No, yeah, that's that's very true. And actually, I have a have a somewhat related note to that. But there there's a scene in this little on one of the shows he's playing where Phil says, um, I, I don't know, remember I don't remember the exact like verbatim sentence, but he was like, "Man, I'm extremely sick right now." um <laughs> yeah. i just have like i'm just like really fucking sick and yeah here i am playing the show and i was like wow that's just like that type of thing is probably not gonna uh really be a thing anymore <laughs> <laughs> it was like something that i wouldn't have yeah. even like registered before and now i'm just like oh yeah oh you're extremely sick <laughs> <laughs> yeah right please well, like, stay thanks. away from me <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um this is a side tangent but in 2011, I don't know how old I was in 2011, like uh, 15 or something. I went and saw Soundgarden live, like Ooh. while I while I had the flu, like straight up I had the flu. 
Like, wow. I was so sick. But I spent like 70 bucks on these tickets. So I was like, I don't give a shit. I'm like going anyway. And I went and like, I wasn't like throwing up or anything, but I was like really fucking sick. And I like nowadays, I'm obviously like should not have done that. But it's just like, yeah, different, different attitudes towards that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I had uh, another tangent semi-related i saw lady gaga um Hmm. in 2017 2018 um okay i guess september 2018 no okay okay well maybe september 2017 i don't know i saw her sometime on the on the joanne tour um, and, and I got fucking pink eye at that show. Damn, that's <laughs> fucked up. Someone managed to give me pink eye. <laughs> yeah, what the um, hell? I can't remember exactly how it happened. I think... Oh! I was, I was like... Th- these two people were in the middle of a walkway and having this really, like, lively conversation. And... And I tried to sneak by them, and this woman who was gesturing just hit me, like, right in the eye with her hand. <laughs> and Damn. that's how it happened. Um, I I guess, or I, I assume so. Right. Um, it's like, what else? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I had pink eye, and I had to miss, like, the first week of the semester. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Cause I had pink eye. <laughs> That's fucking brutal. Um, yeah, I haven't had pink eye since for a very long time. But yeah, okay, sure it was it definitely it was definitely September twenty seventeen. Yeah, okay. okay. Sorry, I just had to sort that out in my brain. Anyway, um, back yes. to the movie. <laughs> Wise old little boy. Um. Uh, I one one thing I noted was it's it's like interesting to see some of this stuff performed, especially like the their performance of uh, number four Mount Erie. Yeah, because when when I'm like in the zone listening to the Mount Erie album, I totally take it seriously. You know, I'm not like I take it at face value and sort of experience the weirdness of what it is just in in like a you know kind of genuine emotion emotional way but right and like meanwhile like it it is it's it's kind of absurd and and it's kind of funny uh and and in a way that can can really only come out when two people are trying to perform it live and and doing the voices and stuff yeah like they're just like totally fucking around like oh yeah just like jump in and like it's very uh theatrical um like they're they're doing like they're not just playing the song but they're like performing the like yes. narrative of the song basically yes <laughs> um, and, very and entertaining I think, I think part of the 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 difference is i guess on the album you know it's backed up like all these like ridiculous dramatic things are backed up with intense instrumentals and and yeah. weird sounds and stuff that just fits it and and frames it in a serious way but then when it's just like uh two dudes and an acoustic guitar it just gets really funny <laughs> yeah exactly i think they i think they're almost sort of forced to embrace it from that perspective because unless yeah. they have like the full backing band it's like it's gonna just sound ridiculous because of how the I song I is, doubt so. it was hard for them to do that. Also, though, like, yeah, no, like I don't I don't think it was killing Phil to to have <laughs> to be fucking around here. No. <laughs> um, there's a part of that also I really liked is um, in, in in more than one shot, but this shot as well. There is a little like actually sort of large paper lantern ball. Yes. Yeah. hanging from the neck of his guitar that i'm you know i'm assuming is supposed to represent the sun or yeah know, whatever, presumably the, the sun song. 
And I just like how sort of interactive and how intimate this type of concert feels. Even the other ones that we were uh, originally going to talk about, like the early microphones, bootleg concerts, it's just yeah, usually like an open uh, like community center room with like yeah. 30 people in it, and they're all just sitting cross-legged on the floor. And it's just like filling an acoustic guitar and maybe like one or two other people tops. And they're just kind of vibing. And yeah. It seems like a good time. It seems like it would be it would have been a cool type of concert to go to. Oh, definitely. Those those are often my my favorite shows. Um, stuff like that, or like with that general kind of vibe or ethos. Um, the the funniest one was the the uh, cafe performance, the coffee shop. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just something about Phil and kyle there and and the big sun lantern hanging off his guitar and them surrounded by like confused coffee shop patrons sitting on couches (laughs) it's it's the best they always have like really good (laughs) uh banter not 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 that these like not that they were like totally clueless or something just you know it was clear they like like a lot of them were not familiar with the work and so this was a novel experience yeah it's Um, you gotta in in those types of situations if you're playing in a coffee shop where like no one knows your music it's it would be sort of weird to be like super self-serious about that type of thing it's like yeah i feel like they're just having a good time with it and that's probably the best way to make the people who don't know your music also have a good time with it Um, they also played they played I want wind to blow and the glow part two in full at that show. Yeah. And they they played <laughs> like an back. indie they played like an indie rock version of I felt your shape with like totally different lyrics. I don't know if you. I didn't that. like it honestly, but it, yeah, it, it, it definitely. I mean, notable. I like the original much more, but I was I was yeah, I was sort of intrigued by this other version, this uh, rock and I felt your shape. No, yeah, it was it was really funny. It was really funny to hear it as like an indie rock song (laughs) there's a there's just a couple moments that made me laugh just them like talking on stage there's one um there was one where i'm trying to find the quote oh he's like does anybody wonder why we're here and then someone in the audience is like yeah and then he's like we're on tour in this region and that was all (laughs) (laughs) yeah i I, I I had spaced out for a second and I I didn't really catch that connection or, or that that was like a, a a question and response kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I I still found oh we're just on tour of this region really funny. I know there's <laughs> or in this there's region a... or whatever. There's a lot of moments like that like um. The the banter well, was really quality in this tour. <laughs> it is. There's another. There's another. We talked about this a lot on the Glow Part Two episode. Another sort of bootleg Mount Erie or microphones concert live at Pete's Candy Store or something. Um, and there is, he's just talking about how he's like selling his truck or something. He's like, does anybody want to buy my truck? <laughs> <laughs> just sort of like that, like very, yeah. very informal. Uh, yeah concert experience um and i guess well i wouldn't say his i feel like his concerts even now are very like intimate and he usually don't oh for sure uh come with like a lot of uh extra bells and whistles but i don't know there's something um something very unique i think about uh what, what i've seen from early microphones concert footage yeah no, I I agree. There there's definitely a specific like um attitude that's displayed in those shows. Um and that actually I was going to ask a question. Um I'm curious what like how popular were the microphones at this time cuz they cuz the Glow Part 2 was like Pitchfork album of the year in 2001, but also Pitchfork in 2001 was like not nearly the same level of a publication that it is now. So I, I have a hard time like uh 
like uh, figuring yeah. out what that like level of popularity would have been at that time. Because these concerts, it looks like there's not a lot of people there. It's usually maybe like thirty people, fifty people tops. Yeah. No, I I I've been wondering that too. I get the feeling that like I don't know. It seemed like the Pitchfork Album of the Year thing had impact. Like right, yeah, I would say so too. Stuff I've seen or heard people say. Um, I well, it must have because there's the whole Kid A review. You know, I never seen a shooting yeah. star. <laughs> <laughs> and that that was before shouts that. out <laughs> yeah whoever i can't remember the guy that wrote that um yeah i it, it, yeah i get the feeling that uh the microphones weren't huge but maybe had some level of clout uh and uh that would continue to grow obviously uh, but also, I kind of get the feeling that Phil was not actively seeking out shows where a lot of people would show up, um, especially oh, totally, from yeah. this documentary. Like, it, it, it almost seems like the point was to play shows where no one would be there. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, and that reminds me of either. It's funny. I can't remember if this is an, like an answer from one of his AMAs or if this is like a lyric on now only. Um but at some point, he mentioned how during these early years, he didn't have, like, any sort of manager or anything like that. Like, he had to organize the tours all by himself, and he would literally just, like, call individual venues. And he yeah. was, like, his own tour manager setting everything up. So, like, he never really was, um, I don't know. It seems like he was very much, like, in control of the types of, places and the types of concerts that he was doing so yeah i agree Ooh, i remembered another thing that i thought was funny i'm just kind of scrolling okay. through my notes here yeah. um there was a part where they were just like sitting in some room and kyle was like do you want to try and learn three songs for us to play before our show starts in like 30 <laughs> minutes and phil is like yeah that sounds reasonable <laughs> and so i guess they just like learned and practiced three songs to play before their show yeah. started in 30 minutes and i, I don't know yeah, it's that like that good. attitude they take towards the whole thing yeah yeah it was very like scrappy freewheeling kind of tour there's this moment where it seems like they're just sitting in someone's backyard in lawn chairs like oh yeah phil and, took his shirt off in the yard and and you get the feeling that like you know this is a stranger's yard like i I, d I did not get the impression that okay. they were somewhere they were like i i guess i never thought about that would have been i i don't that's I a don't good necessarily point think they well, were just like randomly in someone's yard like i'm sure there is communication around <laughs> it or something but just like you can tell it's a new place i guess and and they're just sitting there yeah playing that makes sense i just assumed it was one of their yards but they were on tour, so it totally makes sense that it was not one of their yards, since they would have yeah. just like been at home. And and they're also like on tour in a place where it seems like they didn't, they hadn't really been, you know. Yeah. Or like don't don't necessarily go to. Um, right. Because I mean, you know, Phil explicitly says in the in the doc that uh, he he wanted to play in places where people would not normally go on tour. Um, right. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I don't have too much more to say. Yeah. I don't think I really do either. Um, there was some like skateboarding footage that I thought was funny. <laughs> Um, yeah. but other than that, I think I've gone through the majority of what I like have written down anyway. Yeah, it, it's a it's a cool little documentary. Um, not like the I don't know. Yeah, it's it's worth watching, I guess. Not not to jinx it, but it's got like nine hundred nine likes and zero dislikes on YouTube, which is which is <laughs> quite the ratio. Quite the ratio. I'm gonna I'm gonna add to it. Yeah, make it so, 9 or 10. 
All right. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, next week, I think, well, next episode. I'll yeah, we should be back next week with uh, AJ uh, guesting. Yes. Our biological father. Uh, to talk about Clear Moon Ocean Roar. Which yeah, that's will right. be uh, good. I'm I'm excited. Hopefully. I'm excited personally. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um I I I was mid sentence and I drew a blank. I don't I don't know what happened there. I'm I'm getting tired. Uh fair. It's late <laughs> over there in Rhode Island. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly less late over here, but Okay. Um all right, bye.